Welcome to Politicking with Larry King. One of my favorite people of all time is Donald Trump. We go back a long, long way. If I have to tell you who he is, you have a major problem. Let's go right into it. We're at, by the way, at Trump Tower, on the top of his building, overlooking his city. Everywhere you look, Trump, and lots of things to talk about because he's made some amazing acquisitions, one of which I'm kind of personally involved with. I'll get to that later. Okay, the government shut down. What's your take? Well, it's a mess, Larry. I mean, the whole country is being scoffed at and laughed at, and we're not doing well as a country, as you know. Uh, we will no longer be the great economic power in 2016. Uh, as you know, China will be replacing us if we keep going the way we're going, which looks like inevitable. Uh, we're a different place than you and I remember when we've done all our interviews that I cherish and that I saved. I don't save too many, but I always save being interviewed by Larry King. And uh, we're not the same country. Well, what, what, uh, well, there's one thing I don't understand. I know you're a great critic of the president, but let's a fact be a fact. We passed a health care law. Right. The Supreme Court upheld it. Right. And the Republicans don't want to fund it. Well, it's a law that really has turned law. out to be, that's true. It's and still a law. It's, it's still, you're right, Larry, and I understand where you're coming from, but it is something that's turning out to be very negative. It's having a huge negative impact on business. So you look repeal at what's it. happening. And I guess that's what is going to happen one way or the other. I don't see this getting them to the end, but I fully understand what the Republicans are doing. And I actually respect you, them for it. Do you I agree respect with the them Wall Street it. Journal. It's a major mistake. Well, a lot of people say it's a mistake. Government. Well, let's see how it happens. Lots of strange things happen, Larry. I mean, let's see what happens in the end. But they are very committed to killing Obamacare. Obamacare is, is a very... Look, I have friends that have, without going into deep anything or deep studies, and we can do that too when it's not turning out too good for Obamacare, but I have friends that have businesses, they're hiring only part-time people now, okay? Only part-time people because they get out of obligations by doing that. I have friends that are closing down businesses because of Obamacare. I mean, Obamacare is turning out to be a disaster. So people see this. Some people thought it when it was passed. And a lot some of people it is good, it though. You got it. Don't we need some sort of health law? Well, I think you do My need God. something, and you need something good. I think you can actually have something much better than Obamacare and for a lot less money. You know, other countries, we're not, we don't have great health care in this country, and yet we spend two and three times more than other countries. We've never had a national health plan. We've, we've never had good health care in this country, frankly. But, you know, we're spending the most money by far, and we don't have the best health care. So that's not so good. But it's not so good to shut down the government. Come on. Well, they're shutting it down. Let's see what happens, Larry. It's going to be interesting. Hey, I'm watching just like you. I do respect the fact that they are very committed to it. They're taking a lot of heat. We'll see what happens. But everybody's committed. Obama's committed to Obamacare. If you like commitment, he's committed. You would certainly think that he's not going to end it, and that's what they want. No. So it's, it's a tough, it's a very tough situation for the country, and it's somewhat embarrassing for the country. Uh, on both pa parties. On both sides, yeah. I've, whether it's Republican or Democratic, I mean, it's not a good situation. How long do you think this is going to last? Well, I said it was going to happen. Most people said it would never happen. I've been predicting it was going to happen. But it has happened before, you know, on numerous occasions. Many occasions it's happened. So this isn't the first time. But I made a prediction a few weeks ago, and everyone said, no way would they ever let the shutdown happen. And it has happened. I think it could go on for a while. I mean... Some people, you have a bigger thing coming along. You have the debt ceiling coming, and that almost is going to blend you in. You can't I, let that go by. Right? Well, it's going to be interesting to see how long this lasts. Reagan because in a couple of it. weeks, that's Reagan, right. Reagan, your hero, increased it 14 times. That's right. He increased the debt ceiling. Right. But Obama, your hero, voted You're against my hero. increasing. I like him. I know that. Voted against increasing. You know, when he was a senator, he voted against increasing the debt ceiling. A lot of people don't know that. But... But he okay. wants to increase it now. President and that's Obama, what hey, look, he's in there pitching. Everybody's pitching. They're pitching for whatever they believe. But Larry, President Obama voted against increasing the debt zone. You know that, right? When he was a senator. When he was a senator. But now he wants to do it. Yeah, but now it. he's saying, how can you possibly do this? Well, a lot it's a of people bit change sided. when they get in the office. Well, uh, well, he was in office. He was a senator. He voted against war, but he cloned, but he, he he sends out missiles, right? He he voted against war and he got the peace prize. <laughs> It's a whole strange thing going on, isn't it, huh? But we're out of Iraq, which you you got, you were a strong critic of George Bush. So I was a strong be... critic. I, look, I'm a Republican, but I was a very strong critic of George Bush, absolutely. And I think Iraq was a disaster and has proved to be a disaster. It's in total turmoil now. Iran is going to take it over. They have this tremendous, you know, I took a lot of heat. I said, you, go, you know, in the old days, you fought a war, and to the victor belong the spoils, right? Well, we fought a war in Iraq, and what happened, Larry? What happened to us? We got nothing. 
I said, take the oil. Yeah, People said, oh, that's so terrible to say, take the oil. So now who's going to get the oil? Russia's getting the oil, China's getting the oil, and Iran is getting the oil. And we spent 1.5 trillion and thousands of lives. Now, how stupid are we? You're a very confident person. I am. You, have you ever said to yourself, you know, in that thing, I was wrong. I shouldn't. Maybe I went too far on the Obama birth thing. Maybe I... I don't think so, no. The, no I, did you ever say, I was mistaken? What I like to say that I do like to learn. <laughs> I, I, you know, you always look. Everybody makes mistakes. You have to, have to learn from your mistake. If you don't learn from your mistake, then you're a stupid person. But I do like learning from things that maybe I would have done a different way. A lot of times you're not really wrong. You know, wrong is a hard word because you could be sort of right or sort of a little bit wrong, but you have to learn from whatever it is you're talking about. Did you learn from your wrongness, from your mistakes? I think over the years, you know, it's called experience. I think over the years you learn from experience learn. I'm talking with the one and only Donald Trump, and we'll be right back. Now, you're the, you're the financial guy. You're the businessman. Why explain to the layman why the debt ceiling is important? Well, I happen to think the debt ceiling is a good thing. A lot of people don't think we should have a debt ceiling in this country. I happen to think because it keeps a lid on expenses. It keeps a lid on borrowing money. We're borrowing trillions of dollars from China and other people that don't even like us, okay? This China is not our friend, just in case you have any questions. I don't think you think they are anyway. But look, they're hardened people leaders that are not looking to do good for us. They're looking to do good for themselves, and that's okay for their country or for themselves. I'm not sure which one. Probably a little bit of both. But China and other countries and lots of other people, we have a tremendous debt. We're at $17 trillion, a number that was unthinkable. You do have a debt ceiling because they don't want to go above a certain amount. Now, the thing should have been looked at in all fairness, during the Bush administration and certainly during the Obama administration because it's gone through the roof. And I am a fan of the debt ceiling. I think you do want to keep a lid on it, but they've totally lost control, Larry, totally lost control. So what should they do? Well, they have to cut expenses. I mean, you have to cut expenses and you have to run things more efficiently. We're not running efficiently as a country. The problem you have is you have on expenses, it's you may like expenses on the military, and he may like expenses right. on social... But that's what leadership is all about. The leader, the president, has to get everybody into a room and let's work it out. There's no talk. They all hate each other. You know, Larry, these are people that really hate each other. When this does that happen? A... When we were kids, they didn't... Well, you know, they, they keep didn't... talking about Tip O'Neill, who I thought was a great guy, by the way, Loved and Ronald them. Reagan, who I thought was one of the greats. They were great and, friends. But they got along. They would sit down like you and I, and they had different philosophies, but we, they would get, they would go into a room and sometimes in 10 minutes come out with a solution. Oh, what led to this antipathy? Well, you have different personalities. Uh, you think it's part racial? I don't, personally, I don't think so, but a lot of people do. A lot of people think it's racial, uh, and it could very well be. I don't think so. I think that uh, the president has to, look, he is the ultimate leader in the group, and he's got to get people into the room. You know, when he played golf with Speaker Boehner, I thought that was a great thing. People said, oh, they wanted me to say it was negative. I said, it's positive. They should play all the time. They don't get along. And they don't have, and maybe they get along, they don't have that rapport that you're talking about with Tip O'Neill and Reagan. And somehow, if they don't, you know, you have a big thing coming up very soon, and that's going to be the debt ceiling, and that's bigger than this. And what are they going to do? They can't work this out. What's going to happen in a few weeks from now? So the country is being run by people that don't like each other, that don't respect each other. And if one says uh, two and two is four, somebody else is going to say it's really not. In your dealings in life, you've had to deal with people you didn't like, right? Yes. You have to sign off on agreements. Uh, you, you have, have to, to get along. I, I made many deals with people I don't like, and you try and figure the people out. You study the people, you learn, you, you do what you have to do, you get something done, and ultimately you want to make the right deal the good deal. Now, in the case of the two of them, in particular the two of them, because you also have a thing called the Senate, but they seem to be flagging along, but in the case of these two, you know, we really have to have somebody that wants for the good of the country. Now, so I'm gonna you rise would above certainly this. think they would both want. Well, ultimately, it's not just the deal, it's for the good of the country. Do you see any figure on the horizon? who can rise above this. Any great figure? Any yeah. great political figure? Yeah. You see any? 
Uh, it's a little bit soon to say, and in terms of 2016, it's going to be very interesting. It's probably going to be somebody that you're not even thinking about you right now. You may not even know him, Ralph. You may not have even heard Could it be Trump? Name. You know, so many people ask me that question, and so many people want me to do it. Uh, but we'll Why see have you happens. avoided it? You've always, you've hinted, once we were very close, you, you yeah. were on our show. No, I was thinking about it. I thought you it. were going to announce. Oh, really? I was thinking about it. Larry, I have a great business. I love doing it. It's my passion. It's my pride. I built, look at buildings like this. I mean, it, I do it really well. Nobody does it better. I just bought Doral in Miami We're recently. Talk about that. It's going to be fantastic. That. IMC, oh, really? I am see the opening of Doral. Well, it's 800 acres in Miami and, Beautiful and golf the club. old post office on Pennsylvania, talk Avenue, about that which we're too, building. Though. So many different things we're doing. They're so excited. The Apprentice continues to be great. And so you don't want to run for it? Well, I'd rather not, but I also want this country to be great again. And this country is not, it's going the wrong direction. So why not run? I'll tell you well, something. Well, I'll, I'll see what Honestly, happens. Honestly, you've had all these business successes. What more do you need? I understand that. I'll what see what conquer? happens. First of all, you have an election coming up in 14, which we'll see. And I'll, I'm going to help some people that are good people. Both then, parties? Probably not, <laughs> to be honest. I have a you know pretty conservative view on things, and probably not. But I'll be helping some people, and we'll see after 14, and I'll make a decision. By the way, what do you make of the mayoral race? Well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I like Michael Bloomberg very much. He's a friend of mine. I think he's been a very, very excellent mayor. I think we're lucky to have had him. And it's going to be interesting, the race. I think it's going to be a little bit closer than people think. But look, they're both out there doing their thing. You, are you going to support the Republican? Yeah, I always support the Republicans. You've generally. said one of the most important requirements for a successful negotiation is respect for the other side. Right. You see that changing? Well, they don't respect each other. And maybe even worse, they don't like each other. And the and I'm not just talking about the two. I'm talking about almost everybody. You see the Democrats get on and say things about Republicans like they've never said before. And you see the Republicans, likewise, it's a mess. What do you and make, that's really where leadership comes in, Larry. you got to get them together. What do you make of Senator Cruz of Texas? Well, he did something that was very predictable in terms of the outcome. Because at 12 o'clock the following day, it was the gavel goes down and get off the stage and now we'll get down to our business and do whatever we have to do. So a lot of people think that it was not a good thing for the Republicans, but possibly a good thing for him. He got a lot of publicity. People have never heard of him. He's split the party, hasn't he? I mean, he's got McCain well, there criticizing are a lot of him. Yeah, there are a lot of people. Look, the problems the Republicans have in terms of winning this battle, Larry, in my opinion, they're split. If they were all unified... And if they were saying, we are going out and we're staying out and 100 percent and you had that great, you know, unity, they could actually win. But it's the Tea Party split. saying my way or the highway. I'm just saying, if everybody but had the Tea Party... they say my way or the highway. I understand that. But if everybody was unified, like Senator McCain came out the other day and said, we can't win. We can't win. That's a terrible expression. But he said, we can't win. I supported him. But he said, I supported him when he ran. But he said, we can't win meaning the Republicans can't win. That's a hell of a statement to make. And it's not exactly good for your side, and it's very good. You know, it emboldens the other side. So that was a very but it tough was his thing. honest opinion. I, I say this. If the Republicans stuck together, which they're absolutely not doing, they could actually win. But they can't win with half of them saying we shouldn't be doing but this. The half of them doesn't agree with the other they, half. They don't what agree. Do you, what do you want them to do? In order to get victory, you have to be unified. And they're not unified. We'll have more with... My friend Donald Trump will talk about some of his business items. He mentioned a few. We'll get to them later. A couple of some more political things on politicking with Larry King. We're at Trump Tower in New York. Don't go away. We're back with Donald Trump. What do you make of Rand Paul? I don't know him. It's certainly different. Uh, I I really don't know enough about him to say, but it's certainly a different. Uh, I'll ask you about someone you do know. Who? Chris Christie. Right. What do you I make do. of him? I like him. I mean, he's been a friend of mine for a long time. Uh, you don't know he's going to win. He's going to run. He may run. Uh, I think he's, he's going to be reelected. I think right. he's going to have a big election in New Jersey. He's going to be elected by a tremendous amount. And, you know, Chris has been a friend of mine for a long time. I know Chris probably better than anybody, and I like him a lot. I've never asked your opinion on this. Uh -oh. I'd be fascinated it's by dangerous. It. This could be dangerous. Gay marriage. Right. Well, I have stated that I'm for traditional marriage, uh, and uh, 
that is a view that's been changing rapidly over the years. You know, if you look at You're polls, on the losing was, side. Well, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm on a 50-50 side right yeah, now, but frankly. It's going but, the it's, other way. but it's going the other way. There's no question about that, Larry. It's going the other way. You think it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen? I mean, well, I see more, more and more, actually, you know, I, while I'm for traditional marriage, I see more and more uh, Republicans actually coming out in favor. And, you know, by the, the way, until two years ago, the president was for traditional yeah, marriage. Right, the tide turned. turns. The tide is turning on that issue. There's no question about it. Oh, but what do you make of this Hillary Clinton thing? You think she's going to run? Well, I think Fellow she, New Yorker? Yeah, and I know her very well. They're members of my club, and I like both of them very much. And he was with you one time, and he said he likes me. And oh, he does. all that stuff. And, and I do like him. Look, a long time to go. Like you say about me, and you say about others, it's a long time. You have a big health question. Will she be healthy? I hope she's healthy now. I think she is. But, you know, that's a long time. You have to wait till the... 14 is over, and then you have to go out and really. Well, we always do it. think ahead, no, in America. No, no, well, you always have to think about health. And uh, I think that, subject to that or some crazy thing happening, and lots of crazy things can happen, she has the nomination practically wrapped up, it would seem to me. By the way, how's your health? So I've far, so good. About you. Have you ever had a serious illness? No, I'm, I haven't. Where's Wood? I want to knock, knock wood, on yeah. I'll knock on your wood, too. <laughs> but no, I, I have not. I've been lucky in that way. Last month, Russia's Vladimir Putin had an op-ed, Putin in the op-ed New York Times, offering advice about Syria. You called it tough and amazingly well-written. It was well-written. Are you an admirer of the Russian? Well, you know, for one thing, I'm having the Miss Universe contest on November 9th, which I own, uh, over in Moscow. It's going to be really? live from Moscow all over the world. So, you know, I know something about Russia. I know Great city. a lot of Russians. It's an amazing city. I think he's done an, a, really a, a great job of outsmarting our country. Uh, when he gave the lifeline to President Obama, while it was a lifeline and good for Obama because it got him off the hook, because the last thing he should have done at that point was go in. It was the craziest thing. Can you imagine General Douglas MacArthur talking about war and saying, well, you know, we're going to think about it. Maybe we'll drop bombs in about a week and a half and we're going to put... Well, because the public opposed it. What happened to the word surprise? The, you know, the leadership. Okay, and, and by the way, we should have never done it in the first place. Okay, I was against it from day one. I, it, so if Putin, you know what, we a, have enough problems in this country. If Putin got Assad to back down, and now they're having inspections. We're all winners, aren't we? No, but Putin ends up taking over because Assad now makes it. Assad, you know, six months ago had no chance, according to the great geniuses that you watch on television. He had no chance. His regime was going to fall. His regime now is 100 percent. Russia has now taken over Syria, politically speaking. You admire Putin, then? It's not a question of admire. I think he's done a very smart job. I thought the letter was well-crafted, very well-crafted. And I think he's done a very smart job, because it was all about Syria. And while he got President Obama off the hook, by getting him off the hook, he took over Syria, and Assad survives. Well, do you agree you, with that? Well, obviously, but I think if all's well, it, it ends well. Well, if, it if depends Assad on what you want. If, if he's you not wanted killing to, people anymore. If you wanted to take over Syria, which some people thought, you know, we should have for some reason, I'm not sure that I agree with them, but if you well, believe if you, that, then it was a total disaster well, because we lost Syria. if you didn't want to take over Syria, then the result, you should be happy with Yes, but then what are we doing involved in the first place, in a sense? Okay, you know, we've been involved for a long time trying to do that, and then, of course, then he used the weapons and they were horrible, well, when, or, or somebody used the weapons, probably him, in all seriousness. you say the public, the American public, is tired of war? Totally tired of war. We should, hey, look, you know better than anybody. I was against this Iraqi war. I, it's a disaster what's, what's gone over there. And those people are living worse than they've ever lived before. And you're going to have guys taking over who are, make Saddam Hussein look like a nice person, okay? <laughs> so, you know, and, and the one that will win will be the one that hates this country, our country, the most. So what, what have we done with all of the money and all of the lives? We've done nothing. We've got nothing from that except grief. Do you like Obama talking to the new man in Iran? I think it's great that he talks to him. I don't think he should be as effusive that he's so happy that they're talking, you know, because when he talked, it was like, oh, he talked to me, he talked to me. You know, he's the president of the United States. I think it's great that he talks to him, though. I think that we should be talking to people. Well, I think we should have spoken fighting. to the last guy. I mean, it, it, you know what? It's not weakness. You can talk and not be weak. I agree they were afraid, it. oh, they'll talk. Well, you're the all-time talker, right? You know more about this <laughs> subject. Than, but I think it's great that they talk, and that's a positive, not a negative.
Are you, optim gen are you an optimist, General? Yes, I'm an you optimist. Are? I think so. I'm, on, I'm a guarded optimist because I know how vicious the world can be. Okay, Bernanke, who's going to be? They, they knocked out the guy from Harvard. Right. He's gone. Well, they think Janet Yellen will be. And Do you like her? I know nothing about her other than she wants to keep interest rates low. I really know nothing about her, but she's a big believer in low interest rates, at least during a bad economy, which is what we have. Does it matter who chairs the Fed? Yes, I think it does, because they set an interest rate policy, and unless their board goes against them, which is unlikely, uh, they set a policy that's very important. Interest rates are very important in terms of this country, so it does matter. Uh, I think the respect of the financial world getting the right person, it, I think it's a very important position. Some call the current Congress do nothing. It passed fewer bills into law than any previous Congress since 1940. You agree with that? This is a weak Congress. Well, it's, it's not a question of weak. It's a question that nobody gets along. They can't they can't sit down in the same room with each other and agree to pass anything. So I don't know if I'd call that weak or stubborn or uh, something wrong. But they did pass recently, not this, but last. Uh, they did pass Obamacare, which is one hell of a thing to pass. Okay, and um, not, and not for the good. Reaction to Elliot Spitzer's defeat. Were you surprised at that? Well, I was a little because his polls were so high at the beginning and he spent so much money. But he turned out to be a very strange guy. I mean, how a guy, he ran for governor, he was a disgrace. A bad uh, governor? Oh, he was, well, he was a very bad AG because he, you know, he, if you take a look at AIG, tens of billions of dollars was put into that company. Hank Greenberg. Because of Hank Greenberg being thrown out. And he shouldn't have been thrown out. And I, I didn't even, I'm not a friend of Hank Greenberg, but he was amazing at what he did. And he was thrown out of the company because of Elliot Spitzer. The government, that was, the, I think the biggest single expenditure was AIG insurance, okay? That was the single biggest expenditure. Had Hank Greenberg been allowed to stay, you wouldn't have had to give 10 cents to AIG, not 10 cents. Uh, Elliot Spitzer was a disaster as the AG, and he was obviously turned out to be a disaster as governor. What did you make of the whole Anthony Weiner thing? Well, he's a pervert. There's no question about it. I mean, you know, he's a pervert. I mean, with... with I guess that's the correct with, word. Well, no, he really is. I mean, he's a sick person. Now, here's a guy that they caught him, and he goes, and the public sort of forgave, enough that he was actually leading in a poll, <laughs> and close in other polls, right? And I couldn't believe it. And then he did it again. He did the whole thing again the tweeting or whatever the hell he was doing. And I said, can you believe it? And then he went down like a rocket ship, okay? So, but he's a sick person. And a guy like, he'll always do it. And I can only give his wife a little bit of advice, get out of there fast, because <laughs> it's not gonna change. You know, so, these perverts, when you're that way, <laughs> it doesn't change. Try Larry. to speak up, Donald. A couple of other quick things before we leave. But I didn't like him much anyway. So you yeah. bought the old post office in yes. Washington, one of my favorite buildings. Right, You're it's one of the great it buildings. You're turning into a hotel? Yes, we're going to build a super luxury hotel. I'm oh, working on that with Avenue. my children, and Ivanka is working very hard on that one on Pennsylvania Avenue, right between, as you know, right between the oh, White right. House and all of our friends from Congress. I guess you're going to call it the Trump something. It's going to be called Trump International Hotel, and it's the... The old post office, very famous building. Got to keep the old post office up. Built in the eight. Oh yeah, uh, we're going to keep the name. Built in the 1800s, an amazing building. When I lived in Miami, there was the Doral Beach Hotel, and they opened the Doral Hotel and Country Club. Right. I emceed that opening on wow, television. Wow, that's the great. The microphones, the wow. old dignitaries, and now you own that. I own it. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be the Trump it's Doral. Be amazing. It's under construction right now. It's, oh, you're redoing it. I've, I've blown up the golf course, the Blue Monster, the famous Blue Monster, where Tiger Woods won last year, and all great players, and they have the 70 best players in the world. And you're going to change the name. We blew it up, and uh, yeah, it's going to be called Trump National Doral, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be great. You're a piece of work. Well, so are you. Thank you, Larry. Donald Trump. That's this edition of Politicking with Larry King. See you next time. Larry, you've done a terrible job. It's been a lousy interview. You're fired.